there is no question about the historical factor of Malta always being pro-Italy and, as an extension, pro-German. You've got to understand from the Maltese perspective, the cultural perspective, speaking from the viewpoint of the Knights of Malta, speaking from the viewpoint of everything Maltese, they can be as... I'm not going to say we, we as in me with them because I'm Australian, but I'm only saying they, but I'm going to say we anyway because just for the historical appreciation part. We can be as <clears throat> pro Italian and pro-German as one can be but when you start bombing the island even though we're fondly aware that that's only occurring because the British are using it as a base and we're being seen as duplicitous traitors it doesn't matter you still bombed us the Maltese weren't dumb so the biggest mistake Mussolini <coughs> and even Hitler made was underestimating the capacity for other nations to outwit the, the situation. That's why Malta becoming independent took, took Britain completely by surprise, took London completely by surprise. They, didn't, they did not see that coming. They could not believe what they were seeing. Two seconds ago, they were holding a referendum on Malta becoming a part of the UK, which it didn't offer to any other nation, I believe. And then the next minute, it's it's all its uh, political class, the Maltese, said, no, nah, absolutely fucking not. We're becoming independent. And the British were like, no, absolutely not. You're not becoming independent. And they didn't make a war of it because it would have not ended their way. Uh, on 100% of the occasions, Malta has won wars uh, when anyone tried to press, and they weren't going to be any different. They were not going to be harder than the Germans or the uh, Ottoman. They would have been very easy to get rid of, so they didn't even bother. Uh, so, understand the historical context and basis as to why, in World War II, a lot of Maltese were disgruntled at the Axis powers, they were pro-Axis. 80% of the population were pro-Axis. And they did not like the fact that the British were using their country as a base. But at the same time, you've got to understand, this is Malta we're talking about, the home of the Knights. They were playing a game for a very long time. And a very European game. They were playing, they were well ahead. So it was a very difficult period in the world. And uh, I'd need hours on end to explain it, if not days. But uh, that's why I like to speak in summary. In nearly every video, if not all of them. But uh, suffice to say, Malta became independent. And then it aligned itself with the EU. Now, I have other ideas of even the Commonwealth, but that's Malta's business. In terms of saying to the Commonwealth, sorry, but we're just part of the EU and that will be enough for us. All effort there, nowhere else. That's my stern opinion. Now, I just want to highlight how pro-Italian and German the Maltese are. Okay, when, just to clarify that, so you can understand how they felt in the 40s. They felt betrayed by their brothers. They felt utterly betrayed by the Germans. And that's why they got the reaction they got. Because they were always in favour of them, but the British were making it easy for what they wanted to uh, support, almost as if, the British were forcing them to support them. 
but at the same time, as I said, Malta, the Malta and the political class in the background, that is, that really didn't go anywhere since the early 1800s. They were playing that most European game, which I think the Italians understand what that means. I don't think anybody else will understand what it means. I think the Germans have a rough idea, but that most European game is definitely something that <laughs> the Italians know, even the French. Um, so the Maltese were playing the most European game, and I don't think anybody plays it better because of the sheer influence of people that have always been on Malta. But I just want to highlight to you how pro-Italian and German the Maltese were, and more now than ever. Okay? In Malta, names, okay? First names. You call your children after a relative, like a, a, a uh, after a grandfather, after a father, and you also recycle generation old names. If there has always been a Albert in the family or something like that, there'll always be an Alberto in the family. If there's always been a Chris in the family, there'll always be a Chris in the family. Um, if there's always been uh, whatever that person's name is, there'll always be that person somewhere in the family. So that's for most Maltese families. And then you've got different naming traditions. Some people like to name their children according to what they look like. <laughs> Now, there are a few Maltesers who do that. They'll give them names based on energy levels. And that's... Or the, at least a nickname to begin with. Uh, some Maltesers don't call, don't officiate the child's name until a year or two years because they don't know what they want to call them yet. That's Maltese. It's, how can they know what they want to call them if they were just born? They've got to give them a description. Ah, oh, after a year. <laughs> that's what I'll call him. Fucking beans. He's fucking doesn't stop. Yeah, you get my point. But um, there's all different naming criteria for the Maltese. But they're, they're very... Uh, there's a few of them, you know, I should say. Not many, but, but, they're very, but they're very obvious. Now, when you go to the political class of the Maltese, they become a lot more artistic with their names. They give very... When, it's almost as if when they give their child their first name... It's a massive statement, like, boom, that's his name, or boom, that's her name. That's, that's the political class. So, I'm going to give you an example. My grandfather came from a family of seven. Now, I don't think this... Uh, well, actually, it, was, it could have... I don't want to give you all my Londoners' brothers' first names, because... They, they're all, nearly each one of them are knight, names of knights or crusade, famous crusaders. That's every single one of them. That's fucking hilarious. Jesus Christ, they're all... I mean, eh, I'll go to that in a second. So, I, I never actually looked at their family as to the motives of the first names, but it's, now it's pretty obvious. Okay, on one hand, my grandfather's side, it's pretty much political. On, on their side, it's pretty much national, it's uh, nationalistic. Um, so, my grandfather's surname, as you know, they've always been affiliated with uh, politics. You can see that today because the Prime Minister, not long ago the President, and then you've got all the national security heads and all that sort of stuff, all of Bella. Um, it just doesn't stop, even to this day, and it's been like that since the 1300s. So it's always been about politics in our family. So with my grandfather, a child of seven, three boys, four girls, and him being the third oldest, I think, the, I think Jin, Jane and uh, Emmanuel is a little bit older than him. I think he's the third. Could be wrong. So he's somewhere in the middle. But um, this is how it went. His brother's names are Victor and Emmanuel. The Italian king who reigned at that time, his name was Victor Emmanuel. 
and there were no more Italian kings to name kids after, so none knew, I guess, is, or he, they want, he, I should say, that his mother wanted to make a mix. So none is, uh called Nanu Oscar. And I think there was a there was a prince or a royal named Oscar who Nanna Rita liked, which is Nanu's mum. My Buz Nanna Rita, my great grandmother, who died in her late nineties, a beautiful life. Not long ago, but she died in her late nineties, still cleaning, still moving around the house. I'd have loved to go there and visit her, but oh well. And um yeah, so that was a way of saying, these are my children, Victor, Emmanuel, Oscar. That's, I've named them after Victor, Emmanuel, and Oscar. All German and Italian royalty. Victor, Emmanuel being the uh, king of Italy. I think since the 1900s. Uh, since, since 1900, so he, I think he was king for over 40 years. Yeah. He's the person that put Mussolini in power, uh, reluctantly. Reluctantly, I, I think he had to. And Mussolini didn't like him, but he wasn't going to complain. He got what he wanted. And uh, the point is, she that was after the war. So that was just during the siege and after the war. That's when the kids were named. Not before. But during and after, so she called their kids all Axis power names, uh, royalty. As to say, that's these are who we are for. We are pro-European. We are not pro-British. Um, so one would ask then, why did none of them migrate to Australia? Because Australia is not Britain. And a lot of his friends his peers were saying go to australia it's an independent country it's not influenced by the british it's a sovereign state that's what they were told they were told it has nothing to do with britain as many people were told so that's the story of how none knew came to australia because apparently it had nothing to do with britain but anyway that's another story for another day the maltese 80 percent of them didn't like Britain didn't like a single thing they were doing, but uh, there was a lot of fucking about. And the, but the thing is, the Maltese loved the English. It's, there was a, always been a massive distinction of the government and the people they bring with them. Uh, but that's that's a highlight of how Maltese people name their children and say, "Yeah, this is how pro Italian and German we are." This is the name of my kids. Pretty much Italy and Germany. <laughs> None of being Germany. And fuck, he is ruthless like any ruthless German could be. Jesus Christ, there's definitely German in our blood somewhere. Going back to the Knights. And and, and if I'm correct, down in Nanna Rita's bloodline, there is a, a few Germans. Uh, there's a German name in there. And it starts to get a bit interesting as to who, can, who you can start pairing knights with and who would have housed illegitimate kids and etc so it's almost certain that the illegitimate illegitimate german knight came through nanda rita uh, <laughs> who's not a, a bella i think she was a chini anyway fuck fuck the fine yeah. i've got it somewhere on paper but that's that's the sentiment of the maltese so the what i'm saying is the italians and the germans were completely wrong in their assessment of the maltese during the war, war years, they made the worst mistakes possible. Malta was the last place they needed to focus on. Britain wanted them to focus on Malta. Because they knew Malta, if they got them into trouble, they knew the Maltese would never give up. They knew they knew exactly what the Maltese was like, were like. They knew the Maltese would not surrender until the end of time. Unless they're all dead beforehand. Which is unlikely. And that's why they called off Operation Hercules. It wasn't going to work. They pissed off the Maltese. It's just, you shouldn't have bombed Malta. So that, that wasn't the error of the Maltese. Misunderstanding? Yes. But the Maltese did not make an error. Um, <laughs> so 
There's a lot of pro-European sentiment in my family, especially Western European. Highlight Western, Latin European, Western European. Um, and then it's funny, you go to my nunna side, and it's, now I start to see it pretty obvious because her, her family's not as political as nuns, but in some ways some family members really are. And there is a very noble tradition in Nanda's family too, because her, her surname is also uh, European nobility, uh, technically. Oh, and even, probably indeed, for fuck's sake, it was them who operated the bakery that pretty much saved, or helped, I should never say such a thing. I believe, I'm led to believe it was one of, it was their bakery being ran during the war years that assisted in keeping the Maltese fed. So there was a lot of nobility in Nanda's family. Uh, indeed, and in technicality, in actuality, they're not a they're not a Roman patrician uh, family, though. Whereas Abela is, which is the highest uh, form of nobility you can get for uh, Roman. In other words, it's Roman royalty. So Abela is a Roman patrician name, and that can be legitimately traced all the way back to Rome. And I've got the document for that somewhere, but it's quite intriguing. So yeah, Abela is. Roman royalty, a Roman royal name. Uh, for instance, there's no English surname that can cross that. They can pretend to, they can say they've intermarried with Europeans there forever and this, this and that, but then they'll never be Roman patricians. Impossible. There's, there's the fact that their surname is not patriarchal, doesn't have the Latin, means it's impossible. It doesn't matter how many laws they can change, What's done is done. They can never be Roman patrician. Uh, there have been some occasions where the, the royalty in England have fancied themselves as a type of continuation to Rome. You fucking dumb guts. Anyway, oh, I don't want to start with that. But Nunda's family, when you look at them, because they are legitimate European nobility. They're actually nobility. And now it starts to become obvious, even her, even the... Um, wording the, the naming of her brothers because it's usually the males that the statements is made not so much the females in southern europe the naming of all her brothers because nanna is one of 15 <laughs> nanna is one of seven nanna is one of 15 um and three died at birth so technically one of 12 you minus the three and i think it's seven girls and five boys uh, uncle george and uncle john died and that means there's only Uncle Manuel, Uncle Godwin, and Uncle Raymond left. But if you look at all their names, they're all famous crusader names, or something to do with the Knights of Saint, or something to do with the Hospitlers, or something to do with chivalry. George, John, Ramon being a famous crusader, Godwin being the fucking pretty much the most famous crusaders of them all, and uh, a Manuel. That I can't. I can't put a, a. That's. I know there are plenty of crusaders named Manuel. There was also a grand master named Manuel, so it's pretty. There was also a grand master named George. So it's pretty obvious where those naming. Uh, the naming comes from, and I, I know my Nanu Vince, my great grandfather Nanu Vince, my Nanu Chensu. I know that he would have known to name them that or have them name that. Oh, none of it from the stories I've been told is fucking. If you think my Nunu's bad, Jesus Christ. Nunu Chensu was a fucking. The cross between a fucking insurance salesman and a grim and the Grim Reaper. Yeah, fuck me dead. This, they make him sound like he was the most fucking vicious person on Malta. My Nunu's father. And I think he was. He made my Nunu drink. He, oh, he was bad. No wonder my Nunu hates men. <laughs> No wonder my nunna liked to torture my nunna. Fuck. He was bad. He was exceptionally bad. Like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, I'm not going to go into those stories, but he was brutal. And, uh, but yeah, it's pretty clear that that tradition of naming kids, for him at least, it was crusaders all the way. It was the Knights of, it was the Maltese tradition, Knights of Malta. These are the these are names of famous Maltese or persons affiliated with the Knights of Malta, with this island that we are. 
And there's no doubt that that's a result of uh, cross, of illegitimate crossbreeding with knights. There's no doubt about that. Um, so there's some interesting facts about how Maltese persons were named and their pro-European uh, propensity that always has been and always will be.